Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Unify Design Center. This is a free tool by Ubiquity that could help you make a decision on what material you need to purchase. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord server and an Amazon storefront. I'll put the links in the description below. The one requirement you need is to have a Ubiquity account and that's to sign in to the Unify Design Center. So I'm gonna click on my Ubiquity account and then we're gonna sign in. Now we're signed in, we can see, welcome to Unify Design Center. Use the designer to plan your Unify deployment using solutions that best fit your need. So we'll press create project. I'm gonna give this a project name of YouTube. And the building location we'll put as Toronto. Now it's going to ask you a couple questions. What's your product preference? Is it value or performance? For me, it will be performance. And then we have a building type section. So we have home, stadium, office, school, hotel, or other. I'm going to stick with office. And then we have a building size. So is it under 2,000 square feet between 2,000 and 5,000, 5,000 and 10,000, or 10,000 and above? We're going to be about the 2,000 to 5,000. The building users will be between 100 and 300, and then we'll press next. Now it's asking us to select a solution. So do you want wired and Wi-Fi network management, which we'll be using? Do you want camera surveillance, which we'll also be using? And do you want building security? So their Unify access, which for this project, we will be using. In this project, I will be filming some on-site deployment videos. So watch out in the future for those. For telecommunications, we won't be using Unified Talk as it's not available in Canada yet. And then we'll press create project. Now the project is created. We need to either add a floor plan. If you have a floor plan of your home or of the office building that you're doing this network deployment for, or if you just want to play around with this, you could try the sample plan. I have a floor plan and I'm going to press add floor plan. Also, if you didn't have a floor plan, you could use this drawing tool to draw a floor plan out. Now we need to give a name for the floor plan. I'll just say first floor. And then we're going to upload the floor plan. We can see the floor plan has uploaded. We could press create. For this project, it's four floors, but I'm just going to show you the one floor so you get the idea behind Unified Design Center. There's a few things that we need to specify. So the first one is the ceiling height. And for this building, the ceiling height is nine feet. You could also set it to meters if you like, and then we'll press save. And then we need to do the floor plan scale. So you could click on the set and then you could use your left click to draw a line. So we'll start at the front and then we'll go to the back. And for this floor plan, I was at site and I measured that it was 100 feet from front to back and then we'll press save. Under floor plan settings, we have our connections. So we have wireless, we have cables, we have cable routes, we have racks and accessories, we have wall sockets and we have workspace. I'm not gonna be using the wireless, the cables or the cable routes as I don't need that on the drawing, I already have started running some of the cables. But one thing that I think is cool, you could add the network racks. So I'll click on that, and then we could add an existing 24U communication rack, or we could use the Unify Rack 24 with a PDU. This particular rack is going to be on the second level, not on the first level, but we'll place it on here so you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to select the existing 24U communication rack. Now we could place the rack anywhere on our screen and we'll say that our network room is right here. Now on the drawing we could see that our network rack is placed onto the floor plan. We could click on the network rack and there's a couple things we could do. We could copy the rack, we could go to the open rack sidebar or we could remove the rack altogether. I'm going to click on open rack sidebar and here it's showing us our rack and our rack elevation. At the top they have a UDM Pro but you could place this wherever you want. By default, they have it on the auto mode, but you could set it to manual. And then we could place the UDM Pro in the middle of the rack if that's the rack elevation we're going to have. So we'll add all our switches and our gear afterwards once we get our Wi-Fi access points in. All right, next up, we need to add our devices. I'm not gonna add the routing and switching as we'll put that in our rack after we add the access points and cameras. So for this site, I've decided to go with the Unify 6 long range access points. So we could click on the access points and then we could select which access point we want to use. So we could see here that we have the Unify 6 long range access point. I'll click on the access point and then we could place it where we would want it to go. 
So we'll click one at the right hand side of the drawing. And then I'm going to have another one near the front of the building. And we're just going to add two access points per floor. And this should be good enough. So if we want to check how strong the five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz would be, we could do that. We could go to the right hand corner and see this settings toggle. Then we could see our coverage area. Right now it's turned off, but we could do our 2.4 gigahertz, our five gigahertz and our camera. Let's see what the 2.4 would cover. And as you can see, that is pretty good coverage for our 2.4. Let's see what our five gigahertz is. We could see the signal strength isn't the greatest in the middle of the building. So we could either move our access point for the five gigahertz, or we could add another access point into the middle. For now, I'm just going to leave it as is. If you were planning on using the cabling for the Unified Design Center, one thing you could do is auto cable. We could click on our device. So in this case would be our access point. And then we could click use auto cable. This is going to show you how far it is to the network rack. That is if you're going on a diagonal path. We're not going on a diagonal path. We have J hooks going across this way and then up to our rack. But if you wanted to use auto cable, it would give you a bit of an insight as to how long the cable runs would be. From this access point, it would be 22.97 feet. Next thing we need to add is our security cameras. So I'm gonna click on the cameras and then we'll pick the G4 bullet cameras. That's what we're gonna use for the outside of the building. So now we could see the camera icon and then we just place this on the map where we want our cameras to go. So we're gonna have one by this door we're gonna have another one on this side of the door and then one on the front of the building. We're also gonna have one on this side of the building and then covering the other side of the building. Now we can see on the camera that we have this little blue color. That is where the camera will be angled looking towards. So obviously we don't want this hitting the wall and we could just click on the device and we could spin that around. One cool feature with this, like the Wi-Fi coverage map, we could see a camera coverage map. So we could click on the settings and then we could click on camera. And here it's gonna show us where we're covering to. And now in the blue area, this is our camera coverage. So we could see where we have dead zones. On this side of the building and this side of the building, it's attached to another building. So there's no way to get a camera there. Now I need to add some of the inside cameras. So we're gonna be adding G4 dome cameras. So we'll click on the G4 dome and then we'll add a couple into the building to get some coverage. And the same thing with the G4 domes, we can move the camera angle around as well. One thing I haven't added yet, and I didn't do it when we were doing our Wi-Fi coverage or our camera coverage, was the walls in the building. So if you go by this hammer and click on the hammer, we could see that we have a draw wall. We have an outer, which is brick, concrete, or heavy material. We have an inner, which is wood panel and other light partitions. And then we have sheer glass and other thin material. So let's look at our Wi-Fi coverage again. So for the 2.4, it's pretty good as well as the five gigahertz, but we haven't added any walls in yet. So let's start adding some walls. So I'm gonna click on the outer walls and then we're gonna go around the whole out of the building and see what that does. Okay, so the outer walls have now been added and this shouldn't affect our Wi-Fi too much, but let's look at the coverage. So our 2.4, it's pretty good. We could see now that on the outside, it's fairly weak. And same with our five gigahertz, we have a few dead zones. Now let's add our indoor walls. So I'll click on the inner walls as these are very thin walls. And then we'll just follow the lines of where the indoor walls would be. Okay, so now we've added the inside walls. Let's see what our Wi-Fi coverage is like. We could see by the access points on the 2.4 gigahertz that we're getting a strong signal, but then it's getting a little bit weaker towards the bottom left-hand corner. On the five gigahertz, we have a few dead zones. So we're most likely gonna have to add more than two access points into this building. Also, if we look back at our cameras, it's gonna show us what we're covering and what we aren't. So we could see that there's a few dead areas that the cameras won't cover. So we may have to add a few more into that. If we wanna see all these devices auto cabled, we could go up to this A and then just click it. And that will show us how long these cable runs would be if we're going directly to the rack. So I'll click on the network rack and then we'll click on the settings wheel. Now we could add different network devices. We're gonna be using a UDM Pro and two 48 port Pro switches. 
We're also going to be using the Smart RPS and we'll be using two UNVRs and we'll be using one Unify Switch aggregation. This rock tool is amazing. I love being able to see my rock elevations and we can move our equipment around by just dragging and dropping. So what I typically do, I would do a switch patch panel, switch patch panel, and then add in six inch patch cables between it. And they do have a patch panel that you could add. So I'm gonna drag all these devices lower and we'll have the UDM Pro at the top and then we'll have another patch panel and then we'll put our 48 port and then we'll add another patch panel into there. We'll do another 48 port below that patch panel and then we'll add another one. Below this patch panel, we're gonna be having the Unify aggregation switch and then it doesn't really matter. We could have our RPS and then our UNVRs at the bottom. The UNVRs are cabled from the back, so we're gonna have to add some cable managers along the side to come out through and into our Unify aggregation switch. One other great feature with Unify Design Center is the material list. So we could click on the materials and then it's gonna tell us how much we end up owing with all the materials we have. It's also gonna show us if it's in stock or if it's out of stock. So that's a quick overview of Unify Design Center. I really like it. I think it's great for doing planning. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.